So I've been doing the human experiment for a couple of years now, and if you're one of my loyal subscribers, I really want to thank you for being along with me on the ride. I do have an announcement. The experiment is coming to an end, as all experiments finally should. The human experiment was my way to fulfill my mission. My mission is to inspire and equip people and organizations to fulfill their potential. The human experiment focused on one key study in the human sciences that you could use to improve your life or business. Now, I love science. I love science because science enlarges our knowledge. You know, I don't know if we ever really arrive at truth. I think we can just get a little closer. And what science does is it I think it brings us a little closer. What sometimes happens in the personal development field, which I love, you'll notice behind me, a range of books and audios written by what I consider to be my virtual mentors, you know, human beings who have truly transformed my life. But the one thing that I think is sometimes lacking in the personal development field is some of that, some of that scientific rigor. Now, I'm not saying that I am a scientist, you know, and that I am always as rigorous as scientists are. Uh, I have immense respect for them, and that is why I draw on them. I draw on their rigor, and the specific things that I'm looking at are those things that show us how we can improve our lives or business. Take something like visualization, or something that has been spoken about a great deal in the personal development field, which now science is showing us can actually reduce your chances of achieving a goal. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's not to say visualization you know, it's totally a bad thing if you go to the human experiments and you have a look at that particular episode, you'll see there are cases where it is, in fact, valuable. But the way it's generally taught in the field, quite frankly, actually reduces one's chances of achieving a goal. Now, you know, I'm not dissing the entire field. I've just said that field has changed my life. I just think that sometimes it doesn't question enough. It doesn't dig enough. It, it, it you know, it pulls out the same sort of perennial ideas without actually interrogating them. And listen, I've been the culprit there as well. You know, sometimes I've shared something, you know, that I've later seen is not accurate or the latest science shows, shows us is not accurate. And then I've changed the approach. So this is what I love about it. You know, I'm curious. I'm fascinated. You know, it's exciting. How, how do things work? We never entirely know. And so, you know, we, we just get a little closer. We, we just get a little closer. And, and so that's what the human experiment was all about. But now, I'm still going to be doing that. I'm still going to be drawing on the science, but I am going to be sharing a little bit more of my voice, a bit more of my stories, uh, my humor, my insights. The reason is because I think to effectively get this message across, that is going to help. And I wrote a book called The Astonishing Power of Story. You know, just giving abstract facts, I don't think is as powerful as couching them in you know, one's personal voice and story. So that's one of the reasons that we're going to be shifting. The other reason is that I'm an international speaker. So I travel a lot and it was always a good reason not to do this because I was on the road. You know, getting in a studio is not always easy. So now I don't have that excuse. Right now I'm coming to you from my lounge. Uh, you know, if I'm in a hotel, you're going to hear me from my hotel room. And hey, maybe I'll take it down to the garden or up on my roof garden. And, and you're going to get a little bit more of me. You know, and this is something, of course, I think we've all seen on YouTube. People come to you from their bedroom, from their bathroom. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. Um, and, you know, while some of that I think is a little bit excessive, and uh, I do think what it is, has done is it's stripped down, uh, you know, that, that high production value. Now, my background is television. So for me, I always wanted everything to be super slick, you know, and I kind of finally woken up to see that that's actually not where we're at anymore, you know, and it's not to say that I have to be like those people, but I'm realizing that I actually quite like what some of those people are doing because you're seeing them as they are. You know, it means that the the interaction can be more real, more honest. You know, I've even taken off my glasses because I, I, like, I want to get close to you. I want to connect with you. You know, I hope that you will connect with me. I hope that you'll leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the human experiment. Let me know what you think of this change. Because the channel is changing. The name is changing. That's important uh, because you're going to be seeing a new name coming up in your inbox. The name is now justinpresents.com to reflect my online home. So no more human experiment. Now justinpresents.com. Uh, you're going to be getting a lot more of my voice. Still getting some of those uh, key studies. And still with that guiding mission to inspire and equip you to rise up 
you know, in whatever area of your life you want to do that in, you know, whether it's just more happiness, more love, more connection, more success in your, in your career. Uh, there's a lot, you know, in this field that I think applies across those different areas of our lives. But we'll get into that uh, in, the, in the episodes ahead. What's going to happen next week? So next week, I want to answer a question. It's something that has troubled me for a long time. Uh, and that is, you know, should we focus on quality or quantity? You know, should, should an artist focus in on, you know, just one painting and, and just, you know, perfecting it and working on it for days and weeks and maybe even months or years? You know, a musician on one song or a poet on one, you know, poem or a business person on one idea, one product, one service and just hone it and hone it and hone it and hone it to perfection? Or should we take the quantity approach and, you know, create many things, even if they're not perfect, even if they haven't reached the heights that we'd like to see them at, and just, you know, aim for, you know, for, for just numbers, you know, which of those is more likely to get us to success? What do people like, you know, uh, Einstein and Edison and Mozart, and what do they do? You know, do they focus on, on quantity, do they focus on quantity? The answer really surprised me, and I'm going to share it with you next week. So until then, life on.